Well, I'm joined now by Karima Brown, political analyst, host of The Fix here on ENCA. Good evening, Karima. So the ANC media releases, they traveled in an unusual manner. They humbled themselves if they went wrong. Does an apology for seemingly blurring party and state lines and breaking lockdown rules actually cut it in your view? Not at all, Sally. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I think we must first and foremost, um, you know, establish as a fact the South African uh, National Defence Force and its jets are not in the taxi business. They don't pick up uh, civilians and take them uh, to other countries. Um, it is simply not done. Uh, more so, there is a national state of disaster, which has been extended to the 15th of October by the Cabinet. The African National Congress delegation didn't have the right to leave the country because under lockdown level two, uh, international travel is closed to all civilians. The Minister of Defence had uh, the right to travel to meet her counterpart. If the ANC NEC took a decision uh, that the party needed to meet its uh, counterparts, it could have done so virtually or it could have done so after the lockdown regulations are lifted or ask for special permission because they can and could have approached the Home Affairs Minister, uh, Aaron Mutsualedi, uh, to get permission. But this is a classic case of the ANC thinking that the laws of the country, which applies to all of us, Sally, does not apply to them. Where is the president in all of this? Because my understanding is that, and Pule Mabe confirmed, that he knew about this trip. We don't know, though, if he was fully aware that they would actually hitch a ride with a defense force uh, plane, with the defense minister. Does this put him into a, a bit of a pickle, though? I think for all eyes is actually now on President Cyril Ramaphosa. Um, given the um, onslaught by the ANC delegation and the Minister of Defence, and may I add also uh, the Minister of um, uh, Social Development, Lindiwe Zulu, who was part of that delegation, it's a full onslaught against the rules and the regulations of the lockdown. Uh, it presents uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa with a very real political and legal dilemma. If you consider, Sally, that uh, we had ordinary South Africans who broke the lockdown rules uh, mm. being arrested, we had a bride at her wedding, for example, being put in the back of a van in her wedding dress. We had people, um, you know, at family gatherings being told that they'd broken the law. People had lost their lives in an attempt by the SANDF and the South African police to enforce the lockdown regulations. There is no indication that the decision by the ANC's NEC to visit Zimbabwe amounts to the president giving the Sivewe and the delegation that went with her the right to break the law. I mm -hmm. think we need to establish very clearly here that this is not a question of money. Uh, yes, the ANC must be billed for the cost, but they didn't have the necessary authorization under the lockdown regulations to board that jet to begin with. And that is the central issue. And President Ramaphosa needs to now speak on that report that is with him since Sunday. It's mm. now Tuesday already. Uh, we know that the president is in two very important virtual meetings, one at NEDLAC and one of the National Coordinating Committee. But the sooner the president speaks about this, the better, because the defense minister had no business um, taking a civilian delegation without the necessary authority from the transport minister and from the minister of yeah. home. Um, in fact, the justice minister on Sunday on the fix said that there are um, you know, instances where there are exceptions, but they ought to have gotten that from the Home Affairs Minister. And if you look, Sally, at the news reports on Sunday, the Home Affairs Minister clearly didn't know anything because yeah. he too was investigating. So there is more answer, more questions here than answers. President Cyril Ramaphosa now needs to speak mm. and more importantly, he needs to act. And it's interesting that this ANC uh, response has come out before he's actually spoken about the report. But I am going to focus, I, I agree, you know, that it's a crucial issue of law, not blurring the lines between party and state, and an issue of principle as well. Um, but the issue of the money is an interesting one. First of all, I mean, we don't know quite how much the ANC is going yes. to be invoiced for. But we also know the ANC is in financial dire straits. I mean, will they actually be able to pay it back? You know, Sally, I think what we need here is not another inquiry because uh, we need very speedy action. Mm. Uh, clear 
uh, if the ANC is now prepared to pay for what they argued previously uh, was a meeting that they said was in the national interest, as if uh, they as a political party can decide what the national interest is. Um, so there's a series of lies from the ANC side. Um, and the idea that they can now pay uh, from an organization that um, as recently as December couldn't pay staff salaries at the Thule House. Um, we need to um, get a full report. And if they are going to pay, we need to understand exactly what the costs are. And we need to actually see receipt of that payment uh, because the ANC's financial position is as precarious as it is. It's an open secret that the ANC doesn't really have money and struggles very often to pay its staff at its headquarters. Thank you so much, Karima Brown, political analyst and of course host of The Fix.